Welcome to my presentation called Heart Attack Recovery Plan and Prevent Another One. You're going to absolutely love this presentation. I've got you for about 30 to 35 minutes. And again, this is the ultimate tool to recover from a heart attack and again, prevent another one. As you see here on the screen, this is called the Widowmaker. This has led to hundreds of thousands, millions of deaths over time. And this is exactly what I'm trying to help you recover from. Whether it was the widow maker where the arrow is pointing to or in another part of your heart, wherever your heart attack was, this is the plan to help you recover and to not have another one. As you know, heart attacks are the leading cause of death worldwide. In fact, one third of people at least when they have a heart attack, they die from it. That is their first symptom of heart disease. So the fact that you have already had a heart attack, this is gonna be how we prevent, again, another one. Over 700,000 heart attacks per year in the United States alone happen. These are preventable, these are recoverable, and this is the plan so this doesn't happen to you again. One heart attack every 44 seconds. Scary, scary numbers about how often a heart attack happens in the United States and around the industrialized world. 15% chances of dying at five years after the heart attack. This is way too high and we gotta come up with some better strategies than what mainstream medicine has to prevent another heart attack or to prevent you from dying of a heart attack. I'm Dr. Jack Wolfson, board certified cardiologist, and I should know about heart attacks. I've seen thousands of them. I worked in the hospitals for 16 years until I left the large cardiology practice and opened up my own practice, Wolfson Integrative Cardiology out in Arizona. I've been named one of the top 50 functional medicine doctors in the United States by draxx.com. I'm the author of the Amazon bestseller, The Paleocardiologist, The Natural Way to Heart Health, and I have spoke all over the globe as a speaker, as an educator, to try and teach people the best in natural heart health. And that is what I'm here to teach you today. So enjoy my presentation on recovering from a heart attack and the heart attack recovery plan. Again, I want to tell you just for disclaimer, this presentation is for informational purposes only. Please discuss any changes in your healthcare plan with your doctor and the information is not intended to prevent, diagnose, treat, or cure any disease. And as you probably assume by now, my presentation is not sponsored by Pfizer, Merck, AstraZeneca, or any other mainstream medical entity trying to sell you pharmaceuticals. I'm trying to get people off of pharmaceuticals. What I want to do is make you like this couple here. You remember these two? The $6 million man, Lee Majors, and the $6 million woman, Lindsay Wagner. From the 1970s, when I was just a little tyke, 1973, this show started. The $6 million man and woman. I want to make you better. I want to make you stronger. I want to make you a different person from who you were before the heart attack. When you had the heart attack, I want to make you better, stronger. I want to upgrade you so this doesn't happen to you again. If you remain the same person, except and then just add in pharmaceuticals, you're not going to get the results that you desperately, desperately need. And again, I've seen this so often in my patients where somebody comes in, they've had a heart attack and they're overweight and they're underslept and they're stressed out and their lab numbers look terrible despite the pharmaceuticals, but we train them, we make them better, we make them stronger, we make them bulletproof, we make them into the best version of them and I want you to discover the best version of you and I wanna help you do it. I wanna help you become the bionic man and woman so you live a long, happy, healthy life to enjoy with you and your family. 
because mainstream medicine, they're just full of failures, unfortunately. And again, I know because I did it. I saw how my other partners practiced. I went to the big meetings. I worked with the best of the best cardiologist so highly respected in the community and around the world. See, mainstream medicine, they don't have the time to give you the information you need. Insurance dictates short visits, so we provide short visits that are just filled with the high revenue producing pharmaceuticals. So again, the doctors don't have the time, the doctors don't have the training in finding the cause of problems, they only get the training in the pharmaceutical industry, and this has to come to a stop. Now, when you leave the hospital, you will be leaving with a slew of pharmaceuticals. I used to always have that conversation with patients when they would come in with a heart attack and I would tell them, you may be coming in on zero drugs or one or two, but we're gonna stack on a bunch more by the time you go home. But again, my goal is to get people off these pharmaceuticals as soon as possible safely and effectively. And that is what I do in my personal office when people come to see me from all over the world and part of, as part of heart attack recovery. But you're also going to get a ton of information that you can do in conjunction with your local doctor should you so choose. But again, in my mind, <clears throat> and the data tells me that we can get people off of all of these pharmaceuticals, again, if we make someone into a better stronger, more bulletproof version of the person that they were before. And that's what, again, we're going to be teaching in today's presentation. So I will create some separate videos on some of these pharmaceuticals in particular, but for here, this is the list of what you're on. And just know that my goal is to get you off of those safely and effectively, and I do it every day. Getting back to activity, getting back to activity after a heart attack is something you need to do and you need to do it in a smart fashion. This is the preferred way that I like to do it and I'm going to tell you the ways as we go along. Start slow and gradually increase activity. Where people get into trouble is when they try and do things too fast. I know that you may have done a lot of exercise before your cardiac event, but as we recover, we wanna do so slowly, each day getting stronger and stronger, adding more and more into your activities. Number two, get outside. I'm not a big fan of cardiac rehab because it is inside, around all the electronics, all of the chemicals and cleaning agents used inside, all of the smells and toxins. And it's an unnatural activity in the artificial light Get outside, get outside, breathe the fresh air, get the sunshine, enjoy what you're doing, get outside and do it. Cardiac rehab really has very little to any benefit at all. If you have the ability and know how just to get outside and go for a walk, I think you're infinitely better off than if you had a heart, than if you had, <laughs> were in cardiac rehab. Number three, build muscle. This is not just about getting on the treadmill or even necessarily just going for a walk. You need to build muscle. High intensity interval training, building muscle is what really decreases cardiovascular risk and the risk of another heart attack after this. And in the recovery of your heart and your body in general, you want to do things to build muscle push-ups, pull-ups, squats, lunges, all those kind of things, get a trainer. This is where all the research is going these days on building muscle through higher intensity training where you kind of go up the mountain, slowly come down the mountain. That's the kind of activity you're looking to do. And definitely, if you can, pair up with a friend or other people that have similar interests. Number four, have fun. This should be a fun thing. Going to the gym on the treadmill while watching CNN or Fox or whatever your thing is, that's not the way to do it. Get outside, have fun, make it enjoyable, make the activities enjoyable. That's how you want to do it. Next, I want you to find a holistic doctor. Now, of course, that's me over on the right with a patient of mine on the left. This is what you want to do. You want to find a holistic doctor to guide you on your path of heart attack recovery, on a plan back to health and wellness. And again, 
I see people from all over the world. They come out to see me for the absolute best in cardiovascular care. And this is what I do. And in fact, recently I saw somebody who came in from upstate New York and I went through everything that the person needed to know after a heart attack and did the most intense and in-depth testing in the world that I'm going to be talking about with you. And we changed this, this guy's life. He was overweight. He was stressed out. He was underslept. He wasn't living with nature. And we changed that. We made him a different person. And now his labs look fantastic. And he is well on the road to recovery. And he is not going to have another cardiovascular event. Or you take a woman that I saw recently, and she came in from Southern California. And again, just not doing well on the pharmaceuticals, very excited to come up with a strategy that would give her better results than the pharmaceuticals. And we just made tremendous, tremendous changes with her. And is she perfect? No. Are any of us perfect? No. But the more she follows my plan, she has realized the better off she will be and is getting just fantastic results with what we're doing. Now, you may be asking yourself, why did I have a heart attack? Because if we can figure out why you had the first heart attack, then we can do a lot of things to prevent the second heart attack or the next heart attack. And this is what we want to figure out. Why did I have it? Because again, if we can figure out why or all the possibilities of why, then we'll prevent another one. But see, here's the difference between me and the typical cardiologist. The typical cardiologist thinks if you ask them, why did I have a heart attack? They will say, it's just your age or everybody's having one. Or they'll say, it is your genetics. They'll say, it's because you're not on pharmaceuticals like statin drugs or aspirin. That's what they will say. But the reality is it has nothing to do with any of those things whatsoever. We were not born with an aspirin deficiency. We were not born with a statin drug deficiency. We have to lead the healthy lifestyle. And that's what we're going to talk about. It's just like this picture here. This is one of my fa favorite depictions and really explanations of what we're doing here. This, of course, is Tom Hanks in the movie Castaway, which pretty much everybody has seen because I've told this story so many times. Tom Hanks, he works for FedEx, he's in a crash, and he winds up on the remote island, and all he has on that island is the volleyball Wilson that you see in the picture here. If we all lived on that island with Tom Hanks, like Tom Hanks, we went to sleep with the sundown, we awoke with the sunrise. We spent the day in and out of the sun and enjoying the power of the sun to make us healthy. We ate seafood, and we ate vegetables and coconuts. We didn't have any pollution on that remote island. And of course, there was no chemicals, toxins, laundry detergents, fabric softener, dryer sheets, or people smoking around us. We were active around the island trying to be a hunter-gatherer. Again, there were no pharmaceuticals on this island. And stress level would have been kept to relatively low. He only faces two st stress here from one, uh, the, the elements and finding food. And then number two, loneliness. And loneliness is a horrible thing. Now, what I believe is that eventually Tom Cruise, Tom Cruise, Tom Hanks is able to get off the island. And as Tom Hanks gets off the island, he does so after years because now he finally has the mental clarity. He's cleaned out all the poisons. He's cleaned up his diet. He's embracing the power of sleep and sun and physical activity. And now he gains the mental clarity to get off the island. And you can do this as well. And I want you to find your own island as much as possible. And in doing so, not only do we make your health better, but we make you better at everything. We upgrade you at everything. You're a better family member. You're a better mother, father, sister, brother, aunt, uncle, you know, uh, you know, uh, you know, uh, spouse, wh whatever you, you become better. And also you're a better entrepreneur. 
you're a better teacher, you're a better worker, whatever you do in your career, financially, you will be rewarded because of how, how, how healthy you are. Even if you're in retirement, your retirement days will be better when you follow this plan. Again, I want you to get more sleep. This is really critical here. Get more sleep. Our ancestors went to sleep with the sun down and they awoke with the sunrise. We want you to try and get to bed earlier. And in doing so, you will be more in line with nature. I recently saw a woman who came to see me from South Korea. And I was asking her these questions. I said, what time do you go to bed? And she said, usually around 2 a.m. And I said, what are you doing until 2 a.m.? You're not going to recover from your heart attack or improve your blood pressure or get rid of atrial fibrillation when you're going to sleep at 2 a.m. I said, what are you doing? And she said, well, I'm watching TV. I'm on my cell phone. I'm on the, I'm on the internet. And I said, no, 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 no. That is unhealthy for so many different reasons. Get to sleep on time like our ancestors did for a million years. Sleep with the sundown. You wake up before the sunrise, and then you will see the sunrise. Get that sunshine. Get that sunshine. Get as much sun to your body as you can with slowly building up your sun exposure, just like exercise. Gradually increase it. Gradually increase that sun exposure a little bit in the morning, a little bit in the noon, a little bit in the afternoon and you will achieve incredible health benefits when you get more sun. People that get the most amount of sunshine have the lowest risk of everything. And one of the things, of course, that I test for, I test vitamin D levels. And vitamin D, of course, is critical for just about every cellular function in the body. And how do we know what your vitamin D levels are unless we test? So we need to test your levels of vitamin D, what's floating around the blood, and what is getting inside of the cells. So if you see the number on the screen, 27.7, over to around the four o'clock of the picture, you will see intracellular vitamin D is the D getting into the cells because that's where the magic happens inside of the cells. Now, if I see that your vitamin D level is low, I'm not going to prescribe vitamin D supplementation. I'm going to recommend more sunshine. That's what I'm going to recommend. And again, I see people that come from all over the world. And these people that come in from Seattle, Canada, my hometown of Chicago, Portland, Russia, Norway. These people have low vitamin D levels, but even people in Arizona, people in Texas, people in Florida, they have low vitamin D because they are not living with nature and they're not embracing the power of the sun. So you definitely need to get more sunshine and you definitely need to know your numbers by getting measured, especially if you want to prevent another heart attack. Next, I need you to eat more fat. Look at the fat on this picture, avocado, eggs, nuts and seeds, salmon, olive oil. Fat is your friend. Fat is the fuel. Sugar refined carbs, gluten containing carbs. Those are the enemies. We need you to eat more fat and we can measure your fat levels. Our hunter gatherer ancestors would have loved to eat all this fat. Fat is the fuel and fat can be measured. And you need to know if you want to really prevent another event and help you recover from this event, when, however long ago that was, you need to test. You need to test where you are at. And the people that notoriously come up low on omega-3 index are the vegans or vegetarians and certainly the people that are not eating the seafood. So this tells me, are you a seafood eater or not? And then, of course, I come in and tell you to eat wild seafood, wild salmon, sardines, anchovies, shellfish. That's the way to go. Eat fat. All these low fat people that may, you may be talking to, run away from them because the, the literature doesn't support it and nature tells us otherwise that we are hunter gatherers who eat fat whenever it was available. That would be our preference.
Again, we do some super duper in-depth testing. So no matter what diet plan you're on, we need to know how your numbers look. And here, this is just part of the panel from Vibrant Micronutrient that we use that looks at blood levels called serum and also white blood cell intracellular levels of all of these different vitamins, including on the bottom there, vitamin K1 and K2. We need to drive the K2 into your cells and that will reverse coronary plaque. All this stuff, of course, helps on the heart attack recovery plan. Address the stress. Address the stress. Stress is, is important, is anything that we've discussed so far. It is absolutely critical. Now, there are different online calculators and scoring systems to measure stress. There's no real good way to measure stress in a blood test or in a urine test, although we do check cortisol levels, and that can be of some guide to be able to use. But again, stress is ubiquitous or common in society. Everybody has it. You see Tom Hanks on the island, he just had minimal stress and it was episodic. Today, we're stressed about family, we're stressed about friends, we're stressed about work, we're stressed about finances, we're just stressed. We're just stressed. Traffic, <laughs> the environment, everything is leading to that. And of course, the more stress you're under, the higher your cardiovascular risk. Middle-aged women are very common in this category. And I had a woman uh, whose name is Sheila. Sheila came out to see me and she is in the process of recovering from a heart attack. And in talking about what had happened just prior to the heart attack, she told me that on the morning of the heart attack, she got into a big argument with her boss. And the boss had just been kind of riding her and riding her and riding her. And she just freaked out. She snapped. And then about 12 hours later, she was in the emergency room with chest pain. So we need to make sure that doesn't happen to Sheila or all the other Sheilas and Sean's out there in the world. We need to get rid of that stress. We need to focus on how to do so. And that's certainly something I talk about in my book and talk about with my patients, as does my staff help to really address a lot of these stress issues. Now, if you're liking the information so far, I would encourage you to head on over to thedoctorswolfson.com backslash newsletter. Sign up for our newsletter so you can stay tuned on presentations like this, great blog post that we did, vitamin supplement product specials as well. Head on over to thedoctorswolfson.com backslash newsletter and get signed up today. The next thing in our plan is we want to get rid of the toxins, all the toxins and chemicals and poisons that are inside of our house and outside of our house. Now, there's not much we can do about the outdoor air, but the indoor air, our home, we can typically have total control over. And we really need to because indoor air pollution causes your body to be irritated, causes your body to be on fire as we measure in markers of inflammation. And when we see all those markers of inflammation that we test for, we know that we got to find the source. And the food and the source oftentimes, of course, is coming from the indoor air. And this is where we do a test again, where we're looking at markers of inflammation, PLAC, phospholipase A, it's called. We check homocysteine, we check HSCRP, oxidized LDL, and more, where we can really see how inflammation is impacting your body. In your process of recovering from a heart attack and preventing another one, we need to check the inflammation and then get it under control and recheck 90 days out. Now, if there's one sinister thing inside of the house, and I've done a lot of presentations, and you can check out my other presentations where I talk about your indoor air environment and the toxic world that we live in. And I've got some great strategies for you, but I want to tell you about something that's been around for thousands of years 
been known to cause heart attacks and inhibit heart attack recovery for a long time. And now we can test for it easily. And sure, I would love to say, check your house as much as you can for looking for mold. Mold and its mycotoxins and spores that get released from the mold are absolutely positively deadly and causative of cardiac events. Now, I talked to a patient recently, and we were really diving into why he had had an event, why he had a heart attack. In order to prevent another one, I need to know why he had the first one. And I said, anything new around the house, new paint, new flooring, new chemicals, they put a cell phone tower outside of your house, anything new around there. And he said, well, a couple months prior, we discovered a leak in our sink in the kitchen. And the cabinet below showed some water damage, but under the cabinet, when they removed the cabinets, they found mold in the subfloor. And he said he started to have issues with headaches and brain fog and fatigue for a couple months before this happened, when they found that there was the mold. We need to find the mold. And the easiest thing to do is not necessarily tear apart your house. It's to look inside of you. And we look inside of you by a urine test. A urine test. Now, don't worry, guys. I'm mentioning a lot of different tests here, and I'm going to come back to these. I'm going to summarize these. But these are the kind of tests that you need. And then, like this person here, if your tests come back high in mold mycotoxins, now we got to find out where they're coming from and come up with a plan to do something about it. Another thing that is causative of heart attacks and can inhibit the recovery after a heart attack is a root canal tooth or dental issues in general. This is a fantastic movie. I would love to see, have you see Root Cause, it's called. And then where you want to go to find a holistic or a natural dentist near you, holisticdental.org. Now I want to talk to you about top five supplements for after a heart attack. So this is going to be part of your heart attack recovery plan supplements. We need to do strategies that boost up glutathione. Now, I measure glutathione. It's in the testing that I have been talking about and will be talking about as we go forward. Daily Defense is a New Zealand grass-fed whey protein shake with vitamins and minerals, antioxidants, anti-inflammatories, things that help improve inflammation, improve lipids, etc. And oh, by the way, it tastes great. I think this is the single greatest supplement available on the planet. I should know because I built it. I made it. We want to do things that crank up nitric oxide to open up those blood vessels. And this is where we get a combination of heartbeat and vessel support. Two different ways to increase nitric oxide. Nitric oxide, again, is like taking little nitroglycerins to open up those blood vessels to improve the circulation for after a heart attack and to prevent another heart attack. Food-based antioxidants with the daily greens. Again, these are just three different food powders. They all have calories. They all have nutritional value. And the daily greens are just your serving of multiple vegetables and fruits to lower inflammation, lower oxidative stress, improve heart health outcomes. Next, we want to get you on a vitamin K product, and vitamin K does some fantastic things, including keeping the calcium in your bones and out of your arteries, and as I mentioned before, we measure intracellular vitamin K, and most people are deficient. Finally, in the top five supplements, we've got an omega-3 formulation, because the people with the highest levels of omega-3s have the lowest risk of heart attacks recurrent heart attacks. And as this study showed from 20 years ago, people that have the highest level levels of omega-3 have the lowest risk of dying. What they did was they took over 2,000 men that had had a recent heart attack. Half got fish oil, half didn't. The group that got the fish oil did markedly, markedly better, and they lived 
longer. 20% less people died in the fish oil group. Can, so can you imagine how you do when you eat fish, do all the good things that we're talking about, and you take the fish oil supplementation? So for that, if you head on over to our website, and then in the shop page, you can search heart attack recovery plan supplements. And we got a one month supply there for you. You get the instructions on how to use the products. They count towards the food budget and they are a tremendous investment in how you recover from a heart attack. They are not going to interfere with your pharmaceuticals. The only thing you want to do is make sure you're not on the pharmaceutical Coumadin or Warfarin. In that case, definitely check with your doctor. So the test your doctor doesn't check, again, because they don't have the time. Even if they knew what all these tests were, they just don't have the time to explain them to you. Therefore, they don't learn what the tests are. They just learn and study about the pharmaceuticals and about retesting stress tests and angiograms and trying to put in more stents. That is not going to help you. My plan is going to help you recover and prevent another event. So this is the heart attack recovery test panel, the test that you need. We talked about the Vibrant America, the micronutrient, the mold panel, and the wheat zoomer. This is part of the Vibrant America Advanced Cardiovascular Risk Analysis, where we look at in-depth markers of lipids like ApoB, ApoA. We check for a nasty lipid particle called LP little a, which I write about extensively and have videos on. We look at the markers of inflammation and the vitamin D and the homocysteine. The higher the homocysteine, the higher your risk of another heart attack. We look at your thyroid. We look at advanced blood sugar measurements, insulin and glucose, and the three-month measurement of blood sugar control, hemoglobin A1C. My goal is to not load you up on statin drugs to drive your cholesterol as low as possible. My job is to make the numbers the best for you to make sure that your body has all the tools it needs to get the job done. Inside that vibrant micronutrient test that we talked about in the heart attack recovery plan tests, we're looking at all the different intracellular vitamins and minerals, that all important vitamin K1, K2 that I told you about. We look at intracellular CoQ10 and glutathione, and again, other minerals, intracellular magnesium, which is so critical as well. Magnesium helps in over 300 body functions. Don't you think it's important that we test your levels of magnesium? Not only floating around the blood, but inside of the cells? Don't you think that we need this information? Of course we do. Of course we do. Because in the people that I test, when they come to see me from conventional mainstream doctors, we find a ton of deficiencies and then we correct them. We look for things like leaky gut in the vibrant wheat zoomer. If you have leaky gut, you have leaky heart. If you have leaky heart, you have plaque, which can rupture and lead to another heart attack. Your heart cannot heal if it continues to be leaky. We need to find out if your heart is leaking, and then we need to fix it, and then we can retest. Again, in this test, our dozens of markers, not only looking at leaky gut, but also looking at immune activity against wheat and barley and rye and gluten. That's what we're looking for. Tests that typical cardiologists have never even heard of. They exist and we need to know. Finally, here is that vibrant mold panel. You need to know if you are getting exposed to mold in your house, in your car, or on the job, and you, we have to fix it. Otherwise, you are destined for trouble from mold mycotoxins. We need to make you bulletproof in order to prevent another event. We need to make you bigger, stronger, faster, healthier, younger, 
by doing all these different tests and all these different strategies to make sure this never happens to you again. So these four tests that we run together, they cost $1,647. And you can go to the website heart, and go to Heart Attack Recovery Plan Tests and get these tests there because this is what you need. You need this information. You're worth it. Now, insurance is not gonna help cover this. Now you can submit the receipts to your insurance company and try and get some reimbursement, but insurance is not gonna cover these state-of-the-art tests. But through me, when you purchase all of them in bulk as part of this heart attack recovery plan, it's not gonna be 1647. We're going to knock off a bunch of money. We're going to make it fourteen twenty-seven. Just head on over to the website, fourteen twenty-seven. We're going to send you the kits. We're going to find a local facility for you to have the testing done. Now the mold panel is just a, a urine test, so you can do that in the comfort of your own home. The others are blood tests. We find a local site, like we've done for hundreds of other people, and we're going to get the testing done there. And then we're going to get the results. And with the results, you're going to have an opportunity to get a free health coaching call with one of our heart attack recovery specialists, one of the Drs. Wolfson health coaches that go over these tests every single day and will make a tremendous impact in how you recover from a cardiovascular event and preventing another one. Because I don't want you to wind up like this guy. You remember Tim Russert? Tim Russert was a weekend political commentator, interviewer, and he died way, way, way too young. He had a massive heart attack and he died. And the autopsy showed that his heart was enlarged and that was likely from previous heart attacks. If Tim Russert was my patient, I firmly believe he would still be alive. But he was loaded up on all the pharmaceuticals. His cholesterol numbers were real low. And then he had a heart attack and he died. I need to make sure this doesn't happen to you. You need to make sure this doesn't happen to you. Discover the truth. Discover what you need to know. And discover the information, again, that I have on my website from the testing that you need to get the job done. And then you get the health coaching call with that, with one of your heart attack recovery specialists to get these results. And there is the discounted price for you as an opportunity in working with Dr. Jack Wolfson. So again, I wanna thank you so much for your time. I hope that you understand that there is a better way, that there is a healthier way and you can do this. You can do this. And I want to be here to help. I am here to help you get off your pharmaceuticals in a healthy, safe way. I'm here to make sure that you stay around until you're 100 plus years of age and live a healthy and happy life with you and the rest of your family. Thank you again for listening to my presentation, Heart Attack Recovery Plan.